Grace, mercy, and peace, beloved, and welcome to the New Unity Baptist Church broadcast. We are the equipping ministry, empowering the people of God for the work of the kingdom. Our pastor is Reverend Johnny Napoleon Golden Sr. We are so blessed to have you join us in worship today. Thank you, and let's begin worship. Amen. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And this morning, good morning, greetings, first of all, to God's beloved, that we will be singing the last stanza, amen, of lift every voice, amen. God bless you. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, Thou who has brought us thus far on the way, Thou who has brought us. Keep us going in the past. We pray lest our feet. Lest our feet. Stray from the places our God where we met thee. Let our hearts bump with the wine of the world we forget thee. Shadow beneath thy hand, may we forever stand true to our God, true to our name. Land. Amen. God bless all this morning. As Pastor Golden uncovers the sacred urn, amen. Deacon Denise Palin will be leading us to the throne of grace this morning. Amen. Following our prayer, Brother Francis Dixon will be rendering a musical selection. God bless you, leaders. Amen. Let us pray. What will wash away my sins? Nothing yeah, yeah. but the blood of Jesus. What can make me hold again? Nothing ah. but the blood of Jesus. Oh, yeah. oh, gracious Heavenly Father, I come before you this morning just to say you are a mighty God. Yeah. We're so grateful for all you've done for us. We know all things are possible if we trust in you, Lord. We praise you right now in the midst of what we're going through. Our situations, you know what they are, Lord. And yes. we thank you now for keeping us and blessing us. Today, I'm asking for prayer between our pastor and God, between our pastor and members, between our members and members. Bind mm. us together as we love one yeah. another and support yeah. each other. God, we put you first in the kingdom building process. As we strengthen and enlarge our numbers, we thank you as you bring our family and loved ones together to fellowship yeah. and worship you. Pray. We don't want to pray to you, Lord, just to pray. We want to pray in no. faith. Yeah. We so. Pray that faith will not shrink. Pray faith leader. is victory. Yeah. There's so much to be thankful for. Our families, our jobs, food on our tables, Lord. Yes. It's only because of you, and we thank you. Mm. Let the sick among us be healed. Mm. We looked up our wellness lift list of all those loved ones we presented to our church. We pray for our children and our grandchildren, oh God. We have some who come to me this morning saying that their grandbaby is in need of prayer and we lift up Sister Peggy now for her grandbaby. Yes. We yeah. thank you, Lord, that on yesterday, the plane to Hawaii had an engine fail, oh God. Mm. And that was the plane my granddaughter was supposed to be on. 
Oh and we God. just thank God that she was able to get out yeah. sooner, Lord, and go yeah. straight to Hawaii. So I just thank yeah. you, God, for keeping her and keeping her Hallelujah. safe. Hallelujah. We're expecting miracles to happen in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for our book of Jubilee and our sacred urn. You know the petitions in them and the prayers that have been answered. We pray for our Pastor Johnny Napoleon Golden yes, Sr. Yes, and our yes. First Lady Reverend Wanda Golden. As yes. they walk with you, we walk with them. Failures won't stop us. Setbacks won't discourage us. We will press towards the mark. This is the power in Jesus' name. My soul says amen, amen, amen. and amen. amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Brother Dixon. And I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got, I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. With my words. I stay no longer with you, with my pleasures. I stay no longer with you. I made up my mind to go my way the rest of my life. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. Goodbye, goodbye, world. I stay no longer with you. bless you. God bless you. Our litany and proclamation minister Annette Dixon will be leading us. Amen. And the word from the sacred canon, Deacon Marion High. Amen. We'll be coming before us now. God bless you leaders. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. And Samuel took a suckling lamb and offered it for a burnt offering holy unto the Lord. And Samuel cried unto the Lord, our Lord the Lord for Israel, and the Lord heard him. And as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a great thunder on the day upon the Philistines. Yeah. 
and discomfited okay. them. Yeah. And they were sitting before Israel. Mm -hmm. Then Samuel took a stone mm -hmm. and set it between Mizpah and Shem mm -hmm. and called the name of it Ebenezer, mm -hmm. saying, Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. From Three. Samuel 7, 9, 10, and 12. What day is this? That the Lord has made. This is, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in that. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. And the people answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain, that they may run that read it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it linger, wait for it, because it will surely come. For the just shall live by his faith. For the Lord is in his holy temple, that all the earth keeps silent before him. And God made some apostles, mm -hmm. and some prophets, mm -hmm. and some evangelists, yeah. and some pastors, mm -hmm. and some teachers mm -hmm. for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the kingdom, the edifying of the body of Christ, until we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto the fullness of Christ. Amen. 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 Continuing in prayer, we will be coming from Psalms 113, known as one of the poetry books of the Bible. That again is Psalms 113. Praise ye the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above all heavens. Who is like unto the Lord our God who dwelleth on high, who humbles himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in the earth. He raises up the poor out of the dust and lifts up the needy out of the dunghill that he may set him with prince, even the prince of his people. He maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. Praise ye the Lord. May the Lord add a rich blessing to the reading of his already blessed word. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Good morning, Pastor Golden. We come again to have an opportunity to write the vision and make it plain um, during this Black History Month. Today we have a treat, two treats, double treats. We're going to hear from young men who are members of our youth ministry and their students of the Christian Education Department, um, Master Khalil and Master Chase. Master Khalil is going to go first. Um, he is the son of Sister Kimberly and Brother Joe Evans. He is the grandson of Minister Catherine Giles, who is who is head of our uh, prayer ministry. And I understand, I see his sister, big sister Kendall is on the line as well. So Khalil, I'll turn it over to you. And you're gonna give us your name, your age, and tell us who is your Christian education teacher. My name is Khalil Evans. I am eight years old and my Saturday school class teacher is Sister Rhonda Tommy. I use my prayer, prayer journal to speak to Jesus. I say hello and also share it with him my feelings and things I would like to have. Thank, thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Master Khalil. Do you have your journal with you? Can we see it? Do you mind holding it up for us? Thank you. Great job. Now we'll have Master Chase. 
His mom is one of our Christian education teachers, Sister Brittany Johnson, and his grandmother is also Deacon Denise Palin, who is Assistant Dean of Christian Education Department here at New Unity. Master, uh, Master Chase, now you have the floor. Good morning. My name is Chase Lamar, Lamar Johnson. I'm 11 years old and I go to Dogwood Elementary. I am in our Saturday school junior jammers class taught by Sister Nadine Jackson. This is my prayer journal and I'll be reading prayer number four. Show me the... Thank you, Chase. Okay. Can I go ahead and read the prayer. You want to read? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dear God, I thank you for waking me up today. And I thank my grandma. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Dear God, I thank you for waking me up today, and I thank my grandma for helping me being and being the best grandma ever, and I thank my mom for being a good mom, and in the Lord I say, amen. Thank you, Master Chase yeah. and Master Khalil. Thank you all for sharing. God bless you and your family. Amen, amen, amen. We give honor as we gather in the presence of the triune God who knows our every needs, hears our cries, feels our pain, and heals our wounds. What an awesome God. Blessings and honor to our pastor, Reverend Johnny Golden Sr., Lady Rhonda Golden, and to each of you assembled in this gathering today. Thank you again, Deacon Sandra Jackson and our darling angels, Khalil Evans and Chase Johnson, for sharing your prayer journal writings with us. As we are writing the vision for Heritage Month, we have been enlightened and inspired, and there is still more to be shared in the days to come. Just a few reminders and updates to help keep us connected and in tune with one another. On this Tuesday, February 23rd at 1 p.m. is our You Matter Ministry Chat and Chew monthly gathering on Zoom. All members and friends age 65 and over are welcome to come out and share via Zoom channel too. That's a different channel from the one we are on right now. Deacon Marion High ministry leader stands ready to greet and meet you. Also, please help us reach our goal of at least 100 plus attendees. We need you to reach out to your moms and dads and aunties and uncles grandmas and pop pops, your neighbors and friends, and invite them to a most enjoyable time of sharing, a time full of fun, fitness, and fellowship. And do remember to bring your lunch. That's this Tuesday at 1 p.m. on Zoom channel two. This Wednesday, February 24th, you will be wild on Wednesday. W-O-W -W is all about the word on Wednesdays. 12 noon, our power, preaching hour, a rebroadcast of a past sermon from Pastor Golden, and then our discipleship training and Bible study at 7 p.m. Join us right here on Zoom channel one. Each Saturday morning, we're on the prayer line praying for one hour from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. And we have also implemented our power of prayer, prayer journals. And everyone from the youngest to the eldest has one. As you witness here today from our youth who read excerpts from their conversations with Jesus. Everyone is encouraged to pray and write daily. God is eager for us to wake up and talk to him and keep in touch with him each day. Minister Catherine Giles is the fine leader of the prayer ministry. Also on this Saturday, our ministers and deacon officers will gather for their monthly Joshua ministry meeting at 9.45 a.m. Just a reminder that on next Sunday, it is our Holy Communion observance during our 11 a.m. morning worship service. Please remember to have your communion kits and elements on hand. For the month of March, on Saturday, March 6th, Dealing with Grief webinar on Zoom 1 at 2 p.m. until 3.30 p.m. The Elder Lloyd Curtis from the Church of the Redeemed of the Lord will be the presenter of the day. 
This much needed session for such a time as this is being sponsored by New Unity's Comfort and Care Ministry under the leadership of Minister Zen Smith. Ladies, let's talk. On Saturday, March 13th, join us for our Green Table Talk, sponsored by the Sarah's Daughters Women's Ministry under the leadership of Reverend Wanda Golden. This talk session called Make Up Your Mind will be led by Deacon Denise Palin and Sister Gabrielle Anderson. This is an auntie and niece duo and is sure to generate growth and inspiration. Tune into Zoom 2 channel from 2 to 3.30 p.m. for discussions on current women topics of the day. We're asking that each sister reach back and bring along another sister with you for the good of the sisterhood, amen? On Sunday, April 4th, it's Eastern Resurrection Sunday. At 10.45 a.m., there will be a virtual Children's Easter Parade, followed by a brief presentation from the Christian Education Development Ministry. You may see Assistant Dean Denise Palin for further information on these jubilant events spotlighting our children. And also to our ministry leaders, please contact Deacon High if you would like to include something from your ministry, such as a flyer or a leaflet or information about your ministry's upcoming events to be included in the Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday gift bag distribution. The deadline to receive your items is Saturday, March 13th. And remember to visit our website at newunitybaptistchurch.org to get all of this information and more. Now to our CFO, Deacon Vanessa Thomas, our birthday lady, the room is now yours. Good morning, New Unity family and visiting friends. We're gonna prepare now to give our gifts of our tithe and our offerings. The Lord has blessed us in such a special way. And we give our tithe the first 10% of that which God has given to us. Malachi 3 and 10 says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now where we saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive. And we stand on the word of God. And we Amen. thank you, New Unity, for your faithfulness and giving of your financial support week after week, which has allowed this church to fulfill the vision that God has set before us. So let's prepare now to give. On the screen, you will see our three ways in which you can give. You can mail in to New Unity Baptist Church at P.O. Box 313, Chase Merlin, 21027. You can also go to our cash app, dollar sign, New Unity Baltimore, or you can go online or use our Toddly app. That's T-I-T-H-E dot L-Y. Again, New Unity, we say thank you for your faithfulness. Now let us pray. Father, we give now under your guidance. We know this is the task and the work that is set before us. We thank you, Lord, for the many blessings. Let us not forget, Lord, that our blessings not always come back financial, but you can bless us with good health. You can bless us with mended relationships. You can bless us when we open that bill that we thought had a balance. The balance mm. will stay paid in full. So any way you bless us, Lord, we'll be satisfied. We ask even now that you accept our tithe and our offerings, not to be receivers, but to be givers. For where our treasure is, our heart will be also. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All things come of thee, O Lord, and love I know that we give to thee, oh,
knows my name. He knows my name. He knows my name. Oh, how he works with me. Oh, how he talks with me. Oh, how he tells me I am his own. You know my name. You know my name. You know my name. You know my name. Oh, how you comfort me. Yes. Oh, how you counsel me. Yet it still amazes me that I am your friend. And you know my name. You know my name. You know my name. You know my name. Know how he walks with me. Know how he talks with me. And know how he tells me. I am your own. So now I pour out my heart to you. Here in your presence, I am made new. So I pour out my heart to you, you, here in your presence, I am made new, you know my name, you know my name. You know my name. You know my name. Oh, how you comfort me. And know oh, how you counsel me. Know oh, how you tell me that I am your own. No fire can burn me, no battle can turn me, no mountain can stop me, cause you hold my hand. I'm walking in your victory, cause your power is within me, no giant can defeat me, cause you hold my hand. No fire can burn me, no battle can turn me, no mountain can stop me, cause you hold my hand. Now I'm walking in your victory, cause your power is within me, no giant can defeat me, cause you hold my hand, knows my name. He knows my name. He knows my name. He knows my name. Hallelujah. Good day, New Unity. God be praised. We welcome every one of you here to this New Unity broadcast hour. And oh, how we are blessed today. Indeed, to know Brother Francis that he does know our name. And if they have your prayer journals, I just want you to pick your prayer journals up right now. If you would take out your your special sacred pen, amen. And uh, yeah, I'm looking for mine here, amen. And uh, get your prayer journal and write it out, amen. 
he knows my name. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. To a man. What's the day's date here? Amen. Thank 20. you. Put 22121. 21. Amen. I write it in there. He knows my name. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. He knows my name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, that you know my name. Amen. Write it in there. Amen. All this month and all this year, we're using our prayer journals. We heard from Brother Kendall and Brother um chase thank you amen if they shared out of their prayer journals they've been writing all year amen and we'll have a special day come i think it's the fourth of uh the sixth whichever day it is the first thursday in may amen we'll have may 6th we'll have our national day of prayer we'll be praying all day long we'll have the internet on our website will be, will be open all day for 12 hours we'll be praying and sharing and, and uh reading from our prayer journals as well as other uh portions of uh, uh writings that the lord has placed in our spirits amen and so today i'm just asking you to write uh lord thank you that you know my name now you can write anything else that you want to write right because it's your prayer journal it's personal amen whatever you want but we strongly encourage you amen reading to jesus amen that you take the time to actually pick up that prayer journal and write something in it every day. It can be one sentence. It can be a whole paragraph. It can be a book. It's yours. Amen. It's yours. You do it as you please. But we encourage you to, to write in it every day. Talk to the Lord about all the good things that are going on. And some of the things may not be always good. Amen. It may be challenging. But we remember Romans 8.28 mm -hmm. reminds us what? Romans 8.28 says all things work together for our good. Yeah. may not necessarily be good that we're going through. Some are going through a COVID experience. Some are going through some other uh, health-related experience, financial, mental, emotional, spiritual is all of life. Amen. But whatever it is, we're able, we'll know that he's able to to take us through, amen. He's able to take us through. And so we're grateful. Thank you, Brother Francis Dixon, amen. Reminding us, amen, reminding us indeed that the Lord does know our name to all of our wonderful visiting friends and guests, as well as our members from South Carolina, from Georgia, from Mississippi. Was on yesterday with one of our brothers from Mississippi and all the rest. Wherever you are, we do praise God for your uh, witness, worshiping with us today. We're grateful to everyone and to all of our seniors, to our mothers, to our sister Carter. If I start calling names, then I'll have to go to my different view to get a better look here, uh, for me at least. Uh, amen. Let's see who I have here. Amen. And so many of you, Brother Anthony. Richardson and others, amen, all here today as we're celebrating and sharing uh, with the wonderful persons who are with us in worship today. God be praised for every one of you. Thank you so very, very, very much. What a blessing it is to share, to have you share with us today, amen. You have your Bibles. I want to invite your attention now to the book of Habakkuk, Habakkuk chapter 2, Habakkuk chapter 2. Amen. As we've been sharing out of this glorious book, back of chapter two. Amen. Right after the book of Nahum is the book of Habakkuk. Amen. And it reads thusly, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower, Sister Erica, and will watch to see what he will say unto me. What a wonderful testimony, uh, Deacon Palin, about how God uh, sheltered your granddaughter. And what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me, verse two, and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision, Sister Dorothy Golden Harrison, is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. 
Though it tarry, here's what you should do. Wait for it because it will surely come. The vision itself shall not tarry. That is to say the manifestation of it may tarry, but the vision is already, amen, in a, in a, in a realm of reality, amen. Behold, his soul, verse four, which is lifted up, is not upright in him or in her, but the righteous, the just, shall live by faith. Let us pray. Gracious and eternal God, our mother, our father, our sister, our brother, our company keeper, our sustainer. Oh, how we do bless thy name this morning because indeed you do know our name. We thank you, Lord, that as we've been in this pandemic now for almost a year, just about a year, amen, we can say here the two, Minister Arnell, Arnett uh, Ellison Dixon, here the two hath the Lord helped us. Lord, we know that it's not by might nor by power, but by thy spirit that we are able to march on day by day. Thanking you for all of your goodness and mercy. Now give us ears to hear, give us a mind, a willingness to do. We ask it all in Christ Jesus' name. And all the people of God said, Amen. I want to share this morning, preaching through the word, by the word of God, amen, seven minutes of terror. Seven minutes of terror. Seven minutes of terror. On this week, on Wednesday, I believe it was the 17th of this week, uh, a great event occurred in our nation's history so many problems occurring, so much difficulty week after week. Every now and again, it's good to hear some good news, isn't it? We've been praying for the people down in Texas, praying that God will restore them. I believe the temperature is supposed to get into the 50s today. Still a little low, but it's well above freezing. And uh, hopefully the, the common uh, wealth, the city, the state, there can get some contractors in and cut down trees and get some lines restored and get the power uh, back on for the people, amen, so that they can have running water, even now that they have heat in some of the home, many of them yet to have water. And of course, we know that we need water for so many things to, to live. But in our nation fraught with so much evil and so much hatred and so much pain, it is good every night again to read some good news. So I read this week and I watched also as the National Aeronautical and Space Administration, that is to say NASA, landed a vehicle on Mars. I was so excited and I trust and pray that, that those of you who watched it or read it or heard about it were just equally as excited as I'm sure you were. My preaching, let me just uh, say this word here, Sister Virginia Woodley, God be praised for your witness and presence with us today, 93 years young. My preaching is not only designed as I write the messages that God speaks to me, amen, to save souls and encourage hearts, but it has a dual purpose, uh, maybe even a triple purpose that as I write and I pray, Lord, remove the man and install the preacher. I'd be asking God in my, in my thoughts and my deliberation, remove the man, Lord, install the preacher. But in installing the preacher, the preacher in turn will instill and inspire the man to greater works, to greater witness, and to greater worship. Uh, that's what I hope that my preaching will do that will, I will be removed, that I will decrease, that God may increase. But in my preaching, Brother uh, Kearney, amen, that the man, amen, the preacher in turn will inspire the man, that is to say the community, that means women and men, amen, to greater works, to greater witness, and to greater worship. I say that because I'm hoping that looking at young 
Master Khalil and 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 Chase and uh, and others that 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 Jeffrey, uh, some of you young people, Brittany and Eric and James and 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 others will 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 will, will raise up and become great scientists and great mathematicians and and, and great leaders and great politicians and, and great writers and great academicians and, and great great learners and great teachers in our community that there's no question in my mind that when you gave your heart to God, amen, that you were saved and, and you were on your way to heaven. So my preaching is not intended to keep you saved because you're already saved once you have accepted him as Lord and Savior of your life. Once you have opened your mouth and openly confess your sins and, and ask God to forgive you and welcome him, his son, that is to say, the son of the father into your life, allowed him now that he's your savior for the next 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years, whether the Lord will give you, amen, uh, to now be your Lord of your life, that that life that you have now, that it would not just be a, an ordinary mundane life said it before and let me say it yet again if, if your life is ordinary if your life is just mundane if you're just going through the minutiae of life if you're just going through all of the uh the freaking frack of life and there's no energy there's no uh electricity there's no elixir in your life your life has no lilt there's no tilt there's no excitement there's no joy there's no vigor there, there's no vitality there is no uh, victory in your life then you ought to reconsider what in the world am I, am I doing here? Uh, there was an old, old secular song years ago back when I was a little boy back in the 50s uh, that says, uh, uh, what am I living for if not for you? And, and if, if my life does not have any, 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 any oof to it, Sister Erica, amen. If my life does not have any, any powwow, any punch to it, is there no pizzazz to my life? And all my rooms, come on here, Levi Stubbs, uh, Levi says, uh, in, the, in the fourth time, seven rooms of gloom, that's all it is seven rooms of gloom if all i got in my life in my home are seven rooms of gloom oh i spend all my years in emptiness oh then my life is empty and then there is void but but i'm living that that ah, i'm living that uh i might have joy not just when i get to the other side and i can praise god for all for whom all blessings flow but while i'm yet on this side i can raise my hand i can clap my hand i can pat my feet and say this joy i have sister vanessa the world didn't give it to me good god almighty and the world can't take it away that there may be trials and troubles and and this difficulties along the way but but i heard him when he wrote in first john four and four greater is he that is in me uh-huh than he that is in the world and this is the victory we have first john five and nine that if we ask anything of him i feel preaching in here uh-huh that that he hear us and, and we know that if he hear us then we have the petition the thing that we have desired somebody help me here uh, of him uh, our god is a great god and so uh, as we preach not only for salvation, uh, but as we preach to lift up the heart, uh, to strengthen this community, this community of oppressed people. Come on here, as we've been in these Americas now um, from 1619, as we landed down uh, in Jamestown, uh, Virginia, not too far here from Baltimore, where we are down there in Jamestown, uh, uh, Virginia, as we've been building this nation uh, with no, uh, with no pay and, and all the things that we've been promised and and yet uh seem like we've been lied to uh, uh deceived and, and yet somehow we still working for oh uh, lord right. working to make america a better nation right. come on ah uh, uh, we hold these truths uh, even though the tr we've been told lies we still hold oh. these truths that uh, we have indeed uh, created equal and, and endowed by our creator because we know who made us uh, i've been endowed by our creator with certain unalienable rights and in the original document they had life liberty and the pursuit of property because you and i were considered 
property. But oh, thank God, we knew that even though others may have tried to define us, come on here, even though others may have to try to define us as one thing, we knew who our father was. And we knew who, come on here, Kuta, and we knew who our mothers was. And we knew from whence we have come and the long road of Minister Smith that we ought to be trodden. And so we held our head up high and we said, we ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. Ain't gonna let Mississippi, Alabama, South Carolina, Arkansas, Tennessee, Chattanooga, ain't gonna let nobody hold me down. And now that the Lord has brought you out, you better lift up your head this morning. Come on, somebody. Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory is here to come in. Well, when this uh, week, when the uh, when the vehicle landed there in the, on Mars, I was excited. I was giddy like a new child, like a young child, because here we had uh, gotten uh, accomplished a, a major, major feat, no small feat in 2012. Come on here. Uh, 2012, we had uh, sent a, a, a rocket up there, a vehicle to Mars, uh, and it had came back down. Uh, it was called the Curiosity. And no sooner than Curiosity had returned back to Earth, uh, we started planning uh, how we would get the next vehicle up. And come on here for the next seven years, uh, We've been working day and week and months uh, out, day and weeks and months and years out for the next seven years, church. We've been trying to figure out how we would get the next vehicle up there. And so they started planning no sooner than 20, than Curiosity landed. They started planning how we're going to get the next one up. And so they went through their designs and they went through their plans. And when they got things together in the first year, they worked on it for the past seven years, brothers and sisters. They planned it out. They wrote it out. They tested it. And once they perfected it, you know what they did here, church? when they perfected all of these things and got everything together and knew that it would work, they tested it again. And then after it perfected and proved that it could work, they tested it again and they tested it. They never forgot that on January the 23rd, 1986, 35 years ago, somebody got arrogant. Somebody thought that they knew everything and they forgot how or they didn't neglect it to, to make sure that everything was just exactly as it should be. And so seven persons got on aboard the spaceship Challenger. It was January 23, 1986, 35 years ago. And one month they got on there. And when those seven souls went up, they was up there for 30 seconds, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, a whole minute. They was up there for 61, 62, 63, 70, 71. But oh, my brother, when they got to the 73rd second of uh, uh, being a kaboom that rocket ship caught on fire and exploded why did this multi-million dollar spaceship uh, uh, consume itself in fire with all of this planning all of these billions of dollars they had spent on it because of a little o-ring y'all ain't helping me this little night wasn't because it, they didn't have enough fuel in there it wasn't because they didn't have the heat shields in place but it was a simple o-ring this o-ring was designed come on here to help them to be sure that where the rocket connected that no no gas would escape come on and it could withstand the cold but because somebody did not do their due diligence seven souls were perishing so they learned come on here somebody write it down i'm learning my lesson lord and the mistakes i made y'all ain't helping me the mistakes i made yesterday help me to plan how to put the one foot better and stop cussing my mother out every day and stop complaining about everything that's going on the foolishness that i've done and the things that i've done to hurt and the harm come on here other uh, folks help me to be a better man not just a better pastor not just a better husband but a better individual it ain't my father it ain't my mother but it's, come on look in the doggone mirror somebody it's me oh lord i'm standing in the need of prayer stop pointing your 
your thing at everybody else. Oh, talking yeah. about they, they ain't got it right and they going to hell. But what you need to do is look in the mirror and say, it's me. Come on, somebody. Yeah. It's me. It's me. It's me, oh, Lord. Standing. Is there anybody helping me here this morning? Yeah. Standing in the need of prayer. Not my father. Not my mother. Not my pastor. Not my deacon. Not my children. Not my grandchildren. But it's me, oh, Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Not Bush, not Trump, not Obama, not Biden, not Kamala Harris, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my neighbor, not my good friend, not my boo, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Somebody wave your hand and say, it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need, yes. Standing in the need of prayer. And because they neglected to check this one little o-ring on a multi-billion dollar experiment seven souls were lost and so now when they would start planning right after that when the curiosity had come back this was an unmanned one the curiosity the challenger had people on it and when it exploded people died and lives were lost seven folk lives were lost uh, but uh, the curiosity was an unmanned spaceship uh, and so they were able to get it successfully off the ground and when it came back they started planning yet again and let me tell you something when god gives you one victory don't stop <laughs> come on here when god gives you one success don't stop take a moment and shout take a moment and write it down and say thank you take a moment and praise god but but don't stop because there's more territory for you to conquer there's more for you to do just because you got one thousand dollars in the bank don't think god ain't got two just because you got two, don't think you ain't got three. Just because you got three, don't think you ain't got more. Just because you got an apartment, don't think you ain't got a condominium. Just because you got a condo, don't mean that he ain't got a ranch. Just because you got a ranch, don't mean you don't have a vacation spot. Just because you got this, don't mean that God can't give you that. Somebody say, I want more because my God can do exceedingly abundantly more more than I can even ask the thing. Somebody can write it down in your book. Lord, I'm asking you for more, Lord. More joy, more love, more peace, more comfort, more, Lord, more, more, more. I want more of you. And so they start planning, church. They start planning for this next occurrence. Once curiosity had landed, and for the next seven years, they perfected that thing to every every little screw and every little nut and every little o-ring and, and guess what they did after they got it just like they wanted it they tested it again and then they tested it again and they kept working on it get this now for the past seven years they've been working on this oh lord have mercy on this vehicle after they got it like they thought they wanted it. They kept on working on it. Millicent Hoover, don't you let nobody turn you around. Keep pushing us. Keep, keep, keep probing. I, I, I just tell them, church, God demands better out of us. I, I know they don't want me to use perfection, but I'm going to tell you that, that he wants us uh, to demand better out of us. And it is, he is, uh, there is a more excellent way. Uh, behold, I show you come on Paul in that 14th chapter of 1st Corinthians I show you a more excellent way you can have a more excellent life than the lifestyle you got right now ordinary Monday mad and frustrated with the whole world but I want you to know if you turn yourself over to the Lord and quit acting like you know it all but say Lord ain't nothing I know I'm like the old folk with prayer mother Shirley Cross they would pray Lord here I am like an uh, empty pitcher uh, standing before a full fountain and then the old deacon would say father uh, I stretch my hand to be no other help I know if thou withdraw and then you hear him say on Jordan 
baby. No, they ain't say Jordan down south. They say Jordan. On Jordan started, banks I stand and cast a wishful eye to Canaan's fair and happy land where my possession I'm bound for Mount Zion. We are on the hill and anybody hit my make it surely I will. Somebody say, Lord, I'm going to get there. By your grace, I'm going to get there. By your help, Lord, I'm going to get there. Somebody say, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, they put this old spaceship up there, this rocket up there the other day, and uh, guess what? Mm, they, they, they shot it off, Brother Jeffrey, last summer. It took them seven years, Lord have mercy, to get it together. Uh-huh. Uh, it, it took them seven months to get from Earth to Mars. Y'all ain't hearing me. I'm talking about seven now. Uh, it, it, it worked seven years to work on it, to, to get the money, the finances, and get the planning, and then get all the time. Seven years. Uh, uh, and then one day it took them so long that they, the name of this space the ship was called Perseverance. Y'all ain't helping me. <laughs> because there's something ain't going to come quick. Y'all ain't. Y'all don't want me to talk in here. There's something new unity to be a great church. Uh, we're going to have to persevere. Come on here. There's something new unity that God got us in this pandemic not so you can jump up and say I'm out of it, but we got to persevere. We are going through it because I know the thoughts I think for you, thoughts of good and not of evil, and I'm going to bring you to a pandemic expected in. And even in a pandemic, somebody ought to say God is still in control. It might seem like everything is out of kelter and the world is upside down, but I will remind you that the earth is a Lord and the fool. And I don't care what the new people claim. Say I don't care what the world. I will trust in the Lord until I die. I don't care what other folks say. Don't care about what the uh, this one and that one say. I will trust in the Lord until I die. If is the word of God is more than my necessary food. Somebody say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Somebody thank you, Lord. Somebody say thank you. Lord, they sent this ship up there. They called it the Perseverance because they knew if, if you're going to get anything out of life, sometimes you're going to have to persevere. I say sometimes you're going to have to persevere. You're going to have to cry sometimes. Yes, you are. You're going to have to pray all the time. You're going to have to sacrifice. But if you hold on, the Lord will show up. Somebody say he will, he will. show up. Show up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, when they got up there at the Mars, now, now get this now. You know what? Uh, there's a sun uh -huh, in the center. You remember this. Uh, uh -huh, of the solar, of the, the solar system. Solar means sun. Uh, and then you have these nine planets, as we know. Them. Uh, I know they've changed that now to seven, but I'm going to stick with the nine. Uh -huh, these nine uh, planets that they had that go all around the sun in the solar system. Uh, there is my brothers and sisters, Mercury, which is the closest to the sun. Uh, and then there's Venus. Uh -huh. And then the third one out there is Terra. What is Terra? Terra is Earth. Uh, that is Earth. We are the third planet uh, away from the sun. Uh, and then the fourth one is the red planet. That's called Mars. Come on here. And it goes all the way out. And the further you know, the further you get away from the sun, the colder things are. And so when they sit this rocket up, uh, this little device, this vehicle up to Mars last week. Get this now. When it left Earth, rather than turning this way, come on here, going toward the sun, it turned this way and went away from the sun because they were trying to get to Mars, and Mars is further away from the sun than we are. We are third, but Mars is fourth. And so for 120 some million miles, y'all ain't yeah. helping me. They were trying to get from Earth. Come on here. Uh -huh, to Mars to Mars. And so sometimes, church, rather than making the usual turn, rather than going the 
familiar way uh, rather than going the customary way uh, to get to a new place in life. You got to make a turn uh, that, you wanted, that you didn't necessarily know you were going to make. Uh, I would not expect it to make. Uh, but if you're willing, uh, somebody say, I'm willing to go. Uh, I will go uh, and I shall go. I heard it when he said, if my people uh, call by my name, I can humble themselves and do what? Seek my face and what? Turn. You got to learn. Come on. Y'all know the old folk when they would dance, when they would shout, the women would grab the little skirt and heist a little bit by their knee and turn to the left. Come on. That was a turn of prayer and turn to the right. That was a turn of change. And I want you to know if you're going to get anything from the Lord, you got to learn how to turn. Turn and turn. Somebody say, work it out, Jesus. Mm. Work it out, Lord. And so here it is. Rather than making a turn toward the sun, they had to be adventurous enough to turn away from the sun, come on here, and go to where it is much colder on earth. The average temperature on earth. If you add up all the wintertime temperatures, and Lord knows here in Baltimore, we've been having winter this year. Down in Texas, they didn't have it, but they did not expect winter this year. And then you got the heat of the summer and the spring, but when you average them out, the average temperature on Earth is 56 degrees. Uh, that is uh, from Norway and Sweden and the top of the world all the way to Ghana and uh, Djibouti and, and Ethiopia and Africa and all, when you average it out. The average temperature on Earth is 56 degrees uh, on average. Uh, on Mars, the average temperature is minus 81 degrees. Wow. Come on here. <laughs> minus 81 degrees. <laughs> Call him, mercy. I didn't say 80 degrees. I didn't say eight. I didn't say zero on the Celsius and 32 on the Fahrenheit uh, and zero on the Kelvin. I, I say this a minus 81 degrees. And so they had to build that thing that it could withstand the cold, not just the heat of blasting out of our solar system, but getting to Mars and being able to, oh God, to hold it together. Somebody that say right now, Lord, whether the wind come, the storm come, the heat or the cold, keep me together, Lord. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all been through a whole lot of mess, but the Lord doesn't care. You. Come on here. Don't, don't make me preach by myself. Some of y'all done gone through a whole lot of stuff, but the Lord done, if there a witness out there, done kept you together. Somebody said, I would have lost my mind if it had not been. Is there a witness? Come on. Some of y'all been broken torn, battered, and scorned, but yet somehow you are still able to stand up on this 21st day of the year 21 and declare, I'm still here. Come on, somebody. I should have been dead, sleeping in my grave, but I'm still here. Mm. I got to quit call my time is going on. I got to head on here real quickly, first lady. But they got that up there. Now what they wanted to do, they wanted to do something, Sister Kendall. They wanted to do something, Erica. They wanted to do something, Tierra, Sister Brittany. Brother James and all y'all meeting with Pastor Golden on these Mondays. Brother Nigel, they wanted to do something uh -huh, that they had never done before. They wanted to have another vehicle, a drone, a helicopter, if you would, to, to be, uh, to eject off of the perseverance and, and land down on Mars by itself. Now they had had other vehicles uh, going to space and I land on the moon. You remember July 1969 when we heard him say, well, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. We we remember those those words, Sister Gigi Michon Jr. Uh-huh. But they had never, never had a, a, a vehicle that was completely 
operated on its own. That is to say, autonomous power without any involvement of humans up there in space doing its thing. And the question is, how are we going to get this thing to do it? So somebody said, and this was a young girl, come on, all my young people, a little 17 year old girl, high school student down in Alabama. Y'all don't want me to teach. A young 17 year old girl down in Alabama, they said, what shall we name this helicopter? What shall we name this device? She said, name it ingenuity. And my brothers and sisters, you got to have a creative mind. You can't can't do the same, y'all don't want me to yeah, teach you. Yeah. You can't have the same old mind trying to get to a new place. What in the world makes you think you're going to get to some place different doing the same old thing? You've been getting up every morning, cussing and fussing. You've been huffing and puffing and smoking and joking and vaping and laping and everything. And you expect your life to be different? You got to put that liquor bottle down. Put that blunt down. Put that jewel down. Put that that liquor bottle down, put that foolishness down, put that argument down, put that, that pipe down, put that mess down. If you want to have a different outcome, you got to have a different income. Come on, somebody. Mm, Y'all ain't hearing me in here. Somebody say, Preach Pastor Golden. Put that mess down. How you think you're going to have a different life doing the same old, same old, going down the same old road, talking the same old foolishness, acting the same old way, doing the same old, same old, and wondering why your life cannot improve. It goes against everything that God has put in the universe. It can't be no different. Doing the same old thing, smoking the same old blunt, doing the same old vape, doing the same old jewel, drinking the same old rot gut liquor, smoking the same old mess, talking the same old filth, hanging out with the same old sis, doing the same old that, and you're wondering why your house, your mind, your money, your whole relationship is messed up. That has to be a change. Yeah, 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 yeah. My God, my God. You can't do the same old, same old and call yourself a child of God and expect the favor of God to walk with you and to take you doing the same old thing. But there has to be, I heard it when he said, Gail, you don't want me to preach like this. I heard it when he said, be ye separate and come ye out from among them. Come on here. Preach it, preach it. I told a young girl said, if we're going to get this helicopter, come on here. Mm -hmm. Down on Mars. Now get this. The uh, perseverance goes up. Uh -huh. It finally reaches Mars, uh -huh. but it's going 12,000 miles an hour around Mars. Y'all ain't here, man. I said in two hours and five minutes, it can go around the Earth from Baltimore to Botswana to Djibouti to Swin to Finland to Sweden to the United Kingdom. Come on here. To Brazil, to, to Georgia. I'm not talking about Georgia and South Carolina. I'm talking about the state of Georgia over by Uzbekistan and by Russia. Go to Beijing, Shanghai, the Philippines, Singapore, Indonesia, come on here, go down South America, hit Baltimore again, go around, and in two hours time, go around the whole world in two hours, 12,000 miles an hour. Oh, mama. And somehow, somebody say somehow. Come on, somebody say somehow. Come on, somebody say somehow. They got to get this ingenuity off of that off of that uh, vehicle so that it can land down on Mars. Come on, somebody. Somebody say somehow. somehow. Somebody say the Lord will make a way. Yes. Come on, help me. Help. Help. Come on, the unity. Somebody help me. The Lord will make a way. How are we going to get a new Come church? On. And how my family going to be saved? And how are we going to get a new house? And how are we going to get a new car? And how are we going to make it through a, a pandemic? And how are we going to live through COVID? And how are we going to get everything together? Somebody lift your hand and say, Somehow! 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 Hey, the Lord thus far, the Lord has uh, helped us. Uh, come on here, thus far, the Lord has helped me. Mm. 
Now they got to figure out. The young 17-year-old girl said, name it ingenuity. Because we're going to take some special mind, some creativity, some different thinking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To get this thing that's flying 12,000 miles an hour. To get one, can you imagine when it gets off the draft, the back draft on that thing, jumping out of that thing, being ejected? The cold is 81 degrees below zero, all of it. And now here comes the seven minutes of terror. Oh, Pastor, I was hoping you would get there. What is the seven minutes of terror, Catherine Cole? And uh, because our day is 24 hours. Come on here. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and so we got one hour, two hours, three hours, four. Oh, Lord, can I preach here today? Um, and we need 24 hours to make our day. On Mars, their day is 24 hours and 37 minutes, y'all ain't got me. But them 37 minutes make a difference. We are not in the same elliptical, come on here, pattern. We can't line up and just take off any day of the week and, and go to Mars because their day and our day is not the same on the same schedule. But if we plan it right, we can get to where we want to be if we just plan it right. Somebody open up your mind right now and say, Lord, help me to plan this thing out. Help me to pray this thing out. Because of what I want to do, it may not be your time. I'm on a 24 hour clock, but you on a hour, you on a 24, 37 clock, and my time is not your time. But see, with the church, my time is in God's hand. Come on, somebody said, my time is in God's hand. I, I wish y'all would be writing here this morning. Pick up that journal right now and write it in there. My time is in God's hands. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. And so here is the key because we got a 24 hour day. They have a, it takes there, it takes Mars 24 hours and 37 minutes to rotate on its axis to make one day. Earth sits at a, come on here, Golden, go back to school. On a 23 and a half degree angle, rotating on its axis, taking 24 hours to make one complete revolution at the same time we spinning on our axis at a 23 and a half degree angle. We are also at the same time spinning around the Earth 365 in one quarter day to make one complete revolution around the sun and you don't and you and I may not know it but God's got everything in control somebody said Lord I'm so glad that it ain't NASA I'm so glad it ain't NASA but I'm so glad it is my heavenly father that's got everything in control and God has ordered Good God Almighty, God has ordered everything in my life. Somebody say, yes, Lord. Yes. Come on, somebody say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Well, here he is. What is the seven minutes of terror, church? The seven minutes of terror, get this. But when that, because we're on a different schedule, and we're on a different time, that when that ingenuity uh -huh, was decoupled, and that was it was uh, unlatched from the perseverance. It would take seven minutes to get down to the surface of Mars. No big deal there per se, but here's the big deal here. Normally we would have uh, signals going from Earth to Mars or Mars or from Earth to the moon or, or Earth to the space station. And, and we would get the pictures and communications and and uh, all kinds of things going on uh, between the two. But because we're on a different mm, schedule here, uh, the radio signals take longer than seven minutes. Y'all ain't helping me. Do I have to finish this thing? It takes more than seven minutes to go from Mars to Earth because we're on a different uh, uh, elliptical uh, circular uh, solar system uh, uh, revolution. 
And so for seven minutes, there is no communication. Y'all ain't helping me. For seven minutes, uh, they want everything to be in control. Uh, they can control the gadgets, uh, control the movements, uh, control the levers. Uh, when the helicopter goes up and when it goes left and when it goes right and when it goes back and when it goes, but for seven minutes, uh, because it's on a different time, uh, they are unable to control it. And so they don't know. Uh, and for seven minutes, has it landed? Did it crash? Did it fall apart? Did it eject? They got seven minutes of terror that they call it down in NASA, not knowing what's going on. Well, I got to close here. I ain't got time to finish it today. But there was a man by the name of Habakkuk that was going through seven minutes of terror. He prayed to God and said, Lord, you told me. I read in your word. I heard Solomon when he said, if my people call on my name, pray, you would hear our cry. Lord, I've been praying to you. I've been talking to you about these child deeds, and you haven't said a word. You haven't answered my prayer. You haven't talked to me. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go up to my tower, and I'm going to wait there because I got to go through my seven minutes of terror. Somebody hear me right now. You might be going through your seven. It may not be seven minutes. Seven just complete this but you're going through your own uh, seven minutes of terror. You've been praying to God uh, to give you a new job. You've been praying, come on here, to God to give you a new life. You're going through your seven minutes of terror. You haven't heard anything from me. Somebody say maybe, Reverend. Will y'all give me three minutes there? Somebody say, Reverend, we're going to give you three more minutes. Somebody give me three more minutes, won't you please? A little bit more. I'm back and waiting to hear from the law. Yeah. And he's been praying, and yet he can't get no, no word from the Lord. No word. And the only thing he can do, Sister Porter, is sing the old song of the church. While he can't hear from heaven, he's got to lift up both hands and say, I will trust in the Lord. I trust in the while he can't hear from heaven uh, while he knows he's been praying uh, while he knows he's hoping that he'll hear he got to hold on to his trust but sometimes uh, when you're going through it it's good to know that God got somebody you can lean on uh, and somebody you can talk to uh, anybody got a grandmother that you miss uh, somebody say I wish I could hear my mother's prayer if I could only hear my mother pray again if I could only hear her tender voice of cheer how happy I would be it would mean so much to me if I could only hear my mother pray again and so what Habakkuk perhaps needed he needed to hear Job Job said I was there doing my own thing going to church every Sunday paying my tithe giving to the warm feet and warm hands and, uh, and the warm nose and warm eyes and warm everything. I giving Campbell soup, progressive soup, and doing everything I could. I, I was witnessing here and there. I was going here and there. I was visiting the hospitals when I was when I was allowed to go. I was sending the money to foreign missions. I, I was doing everything I could do. I, and the text said, and I love God and I hated evil, but one day uh, calamity came to my house. Come on here. One day uh, a proud them came to my house. I was worshiping. I was doing everything right. They told me there was a thing called retributive justice, which means retribution that said if you do right, Yes, sir. Good gonna come your way. And if you do wrong, wrong gonna come your way. But the record says that I was a man that did all things right. And I love God. And yet trouble came to my house. Come on, somebody, give me two more minutes. And here Joe gotta go through his seven minutes of yeah. terror. The text said mm, his friends, Bill had and Eliphaz and all the rest of them bad, bad, bad came to his house and they told him you done messed up. Surely you done sin. Surely you done made God angry. Surely you done got you've got some unconfessed sin in your life. Come on here. But they could not find anything wrong in Job's life. But he had to keep on 
Keep on keeping on that walk with me, church. Somebody help me count it off, won't you? Mm. Chapter three, no word from God. Come on, help me count it off. Chapter four, I wish I was in a lab and I would just say what I had to say, man, dog. And I just point at you and you say, and the congregation would say, and no word from God. Say it even though y'all can't hear you. Chapter five and no, no word, word from God. God. Come on, church. Chapter six and no, no word, word from God. Come God. on, church. Help me out. Chapter seven and no, no word, word from God. God. Chapter eight and no, no word, word from God. God. Chapter 12 and eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 and no, no word from God. Chapter 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, no 18, 19. Surely we're getting ready to get some help here. Chapter 20 and no, no word God. from God. Chapter 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and no way no from God. 26. Come on, pick up your Bible that you'll see I'm right about it. Chapter 27, 28, 29. Good God Almighty and 30 and no, no word from God. 31, 32, 33, 34. Come on, Golden. Right. Somebody say, help me, Lord. And there is what? No word. no word from God, oh Lord, and just about the time he was about to give up, somebody say right now, don't give up, come on, huh? somebody say, don't give up, got a big mirror here in the living room on the wall, and every now and then I have to look at that mirror and remind myself, oh, you're talking to yourself, Golden, when you're going through your deepest, deepest hurt. When you're going through your deepest pain, every now and then you got to look in the mirror and remind yourself you're talking to yourself. Yeah, yeah, Where did we stop at? 34, 35, uh -huh. 36. Uh -huh. No word, no word yeah. from God. 37. No word. No word. No word. Look at can I can I tell you something? There's only 42 chapters in the whole book, and he ain't come on here. I'm giving it away right now. It's only 42 chapters in the whole book, and I hear it. He had what? No word from God. And finally, he gets to chapter 38. Somebody say, finally. Come on, write it down, finally. Come on, write it down, finally. And the text says, and God spoke to Job. Where did he speak to him? Out of the whirlwind. I wish I had time to talk to you. Sometimes, do you know what a whirlwind does? It comes in and it takes your whole life and turns it upside down. It puts your roof in the basement. It puts your basement in your neighbor's house. It puts a telephone pole in your trunk of your car. It puts your car down in the creek. And God spoke to Job out of the world. When, in other words, he messed up Job's life when he talked to Job. You can't talk to God any kind of way. Without your life, come on, somebody. Write it down. He said, we better check ourselves before we wreck ourselves. Come on, America. Ah, Give me 90 more seconds and I'm out of here. Sometimes, somebody say sometimes. Sometimes sometime you do yourself good by checking out somebody else's testimony. Have Habakkuk checked out Job's testimony. Y'all ain't helping me. Maybe he wouldn't have been crying about not hearing from the Lord. Y'all ain't hearing me. Sometimes you got to check out grandma's life and sit down and let mama talk to you what real hard, y'all ain't helping me, what real hard times are all about before you start whining and complaining and cussing and using all kind of stupid language around your mother and around your sisters and brothers. Sometimes you got to sit your, you know, what down and let yeah. the Lord speak to you and, and help get you right. Somebody say, say it, Reverend. Yes, say come on, say come on, come on here. Sometimes you got to let the Lord speak to you and realize it's not them, but it's me, oh Lord. I'm the one in the need, and need yes. of prayer. Yes. And had old Habakkuk just stop for a minute. Good God Almighty. Yeah. Had old Habakkuk from the, uh, sister, sister Andrew Carter, are you on this morning? You on this morning, Sister, Sister Tanya Scott, I need one of y'all to run over here real quick and bring me one of them bags that y'all gave out last week that had pins in it to hold yeah. the pants. My pants falling down. 
Good God, am I going to shot at myself so much uh, till my pants about to fall down. Good God, am I going to have to put a belt and suspenders on. Good God, am I going to oh my God. Uh, let me tell you sometimes, uh, oh, brothers and sisters, uh, you got to understand, uh, you got to listen to somebody else's situation to learn how to appreciate your own uh, and have her back and listen to Job. Uh, Chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, all the way up to 38 before Job heard anything from God. And Job was a perfect man and loved God and eschewed evil. That's what the text said. But when you're going through, let me wrap it up. When you're going through and you haven't heard from heaven lately. Uh-huh. When you're going through and you're wondering, is God still there? When you're going through and you're wondering if it's worth it, just let me close by telling you that God has not forgotten you. Uh-huh. Let me just remind you that what you're going through, God knows exactly uh-huh what he is doing. And remind yourself yet for a little while, and he that would come shall come. Can I say that again? Yet. In a little while, uh, he that shall come, would come, shall come. Uh-huh. For his angel, uh, uh, his anger, rather, and his judgment uh, mm, endures but for a moment. Uh, weeping, clothing now, may endure for a night, <laughs> but joy, good God Almighty, joy. Hallelujah, Sister Tamika Bond. Joy, great God in Zion, Sister Thelma Brown. Joy, gonna come in the morning. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Come on, somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Clap your hand, oh, ye people. Uh, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. I want you to bow your heads with me now. Brother, brother friends, could you just play with me? Play softly for me, if you would, please. And uh, let the Lord speak to the people. We pray this prayer in this closing moment. Seven minutes of terror. Seven. What you might be going through maybe seven hours, seven months, seven years. But number seven, just a number of completeness. Yes. You're going through it. And you just may be at the six minute. But just like those folk down in NASA, wondering for seven minutes of terror, all this money, hundreds of thousands of, of people out, men and women, a woman who's in charge of that whole thing is, well, if I say she's a woman, then you know, person in charge of that whole endeavor uh, was a female. Um, struggling and wondering, have we gone through all of this planning, all of this expense, up at two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, for one month, two months, three months, one year, 15 months, 25 months, 30 months, seven, seven years of planning ever since curiosity got back to earth in 2012. Can we do it again? And this time we want to do something we never did before. We want to land a helicopter on Mars. Uh oh, come on. Ain't never done it before. And ain't no human being gonna be there, good God in mind, to make sure that it happens. We're gonna be outside of communication for seven minutes. We're gonna have to wonder are we gonna get through? Did it land? What was the result? Maybe you're going through your own seven minutes of terror. Maybe you went to the doctor on Friday and you're waiting for the results to come back on tomorrow, or Tuesday, or Wednesday, or Thursday, whatever. Maybe you, you had some concerns in your mind about this, that, and the other. But I'm here to tell you, God is able. God is able, yes. God is able. And God has not forgotten you. I want you to Brother Francis, if you would, Deacon Hoover, here's what I want to do. I'm going to open up the door of the church, but before I do that, Mill, I want you to open up all the mics, and then I want you to close them. But first, I want you to open up. I want all of us to stand up. We're going to sing just one line, Brother 
Brother Francis, a past but not gentle savior, hear my humble cry. Everybody standing, everybody singing. All mics open. I don't care if it sounds like whatever, it doesn't matter. Then I want you to close them after that, uh, Hoop, if you will, please. Man. Come on, everybody. All over the church, let's stand together and sing this. If you're physically able to remain standing, I want to make an appeal here. I want to make an appeal. I want to appeal to you to come to Jesus today. Yes. Make an appeal to your husband, to your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your neighbor, your co worker, whoever they are and wherever they are. I want to make an appeal to you. On a good ship, Shirley, Shirley Temple used to sing on a good ship. Lollipop. I want you to get on a good ship, the gospel ship today. Yeah. Got a rocket on there called Perseverance, a helicopter called Ingenuity. You got two unseen, three unseen passengers, unlike that vice that went to Mars. You got the Father, that's it. You got the Son, you got the Holy Ghost. Unseen, but they're on board with you. Where if there's a man or a woman, a boy or a girl, a husband, a wife, a family, whoever you are, you say, Pastor Golden, I'm here this morning. I want to give my life to Christ. I want to get on board. Join the New Unity Baptist Church. I want to grow in faith. Whatever it is, but I just want to connect. Amen. Lift your hand right now. Let it be known. Amen. Lift your hand right now. Let it be known that we acknowledge you, receive you, glad to receive you. Amen. Come on out of the wilderness. That's right. Whoever you are. While you're doing that, pick up your, all of you have your uh, your vision book. Pick up your vision book right now if you don't believe me. Take your pen. Take your pen. You have to step back to the table and get it. Do so. If you write the name of that person that you're praying for, it's right in there. You are right now going to be an intercessor. Put Johnny's name down in there. Put Mary's name down there. Put Susie's name. You know your brother's name. You know your husband's name. You know your mother, your cousin, your co-worker, your neighbor, that person, the grandchild, whoever it is, you just write it down in there. This is my salvation list, Lord. This is my salvation list. You are intercessor. Praying for and you know. Some of us and we we've been we've been cousins all our lives, and yet we don't know each other's first name. <laughs> if you gotta put poo poo down there, can't even remember poo poo's your name. Go ahead, right, poo poo. Well, I know who you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Well, we're praying right now. We're putting husbands' names and wives' names, taking our time, putting sisters' name and brothers' name, and cousins' name, and co-workers, brother-in-law. We believe in the New York Baptist Church in the power of prayer. John Kearney, somewhere in our archives, somewhere in the history of our church, there's a 35-year-old uh, bumper sticker that says, Praying Church. 
somewhere it's black with white lettering on it. It's down there on, on 22nd Street in the in the window of Sister Ethel Webster. She got it in the front door in the window of her house with a praying church. And we believe that praying, that's right, thank you. That's right, it's been a little, been a little while, man, but thank you. <laughs> yeah, praying, witnessing church, that's right. We believe there's power in prayer. Yes, yeah. That we witness the works and then we worship. But we don't believe that God's going to give us a great increase. How are we going to get those 50 children? How are we going to get those 100? Listen here. If you focus on the number, then you missed it. You don't missed it. How are we going to get the 25 men yesterday? How are we going to get the 50 children for resurrection? How are we going to get the, then you missed it. Go read, go read, go read Zechariah 4 and 8. It's not by might. It's not by power. I'm gonna read the scriptures. How are you gonna do it, Pastor? Oh, I need some help. I wanna, I wanna fulfill my responsibility. How are you gonna do it? But it's by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O Zerubbabel, before this mountain? It shall become a plain. You know what a plain is? Uh, if you study geometry, it's a flat. or if you've just been in the country, there's a there's a flat, there's a flat area. They break that great mountain. God shows uh, Zerubbabel, that mountain of, de of debt and defeat, that mountain of trouble, of finances, health issues, that mountain, I'm going to bring it down like a plane, uh, Zerubbabel. That's what he said. He says, Zerubbabel, the armies of Israel can't do it. It ain't by might. It ain't by your great ingenuity. It's by my spirit. That's what I'm saying. You pray, you pray Romans 8.14. Walk by the, by, by the flesh. We walk by the spirit of faith. You watch and see if, if doors don't start collapsing. You, see, you watch and see if windows don't start opening. You're going to get there and put your hand on the knob. Ain't going to be nothing there because the door going to already be open because God going to, that's it, Kearney. That's what he told him. He told him, I'm going to bring Josiah. I'm going to bring all these high places down. All your forefathers been worshiping in the world. I'm gonna bring them down. And listen, this is more of a Lent than a, than a Sunday morning. But I love Lent. It's one of my special services of uh, periods of the other Christian calendar. It's a time of contrition, a time of coming together. Saying, Lord, forgive me. I can help anybody get off the wrong path, including myself, and get on that straight path. Let me just close by saying this. Not one foot on the straight path, but both feet. Put both feet. You ain't gonna see no, no train, brother James Thomas III was with us yesterday. James O down there in Blackshear, Georgia. You ain't gonna see no train going down the track with one side of the train on the track and the other off the track. It will never get there. That's called a wreck. They call that a train wreck. You gotta have both of those wheels, both set on the track. If your, if your life seems like it's a wreck, Come on, first lady. Take somebody's hand if they're close by. Husband, wife, son, grandson, granddaughter, whoever. That's right. Nobody there but you, then grab it in the spirit. Day by day. Day by day. See thee more clearly. Love thee more dearly. Follow thee more nearly. And as we go through our seven minutes of terror, know that on the other side, on the other side of terror is an eternity, a triumph. On the other side of terror. Now you wait till that, 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 that device gets back here to earth. When it gets back, now it takes seven months to get up there now, so it ain't gonna be back tomorrow morning. <laughs> and everything ain't gonna happen in, in a moment. But the victory that you've been praying for, you're going to turn around one day and guess what? It's going to be landing. It took seven months, six, seven years of planning, seven months, months of testing, all that. And then and then after seven, then seven months to get there. Then it's got to go through all of this uh, exercise. It ain't going to bring nothing back this time. This is not a science, scientific expedition. They want to see if they could do it. Sometimes you just got to try middle, John, just to see if you can do it. Ain't worried about the just to see. Can the church do? It? Does she have the capacity to 
load up and bring it back down. It ain't about what you did. Just does he have the capacity to be a great witness? Then you begin to lay out your mission program. Then you begin to lay out the the the, uh, uh, the, the mission of the church and the vision. Of the church. But does she have the capacity for greatness? Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our church. Doing it in our family, doing it in our home. We pray the prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Be seated, church. Thank you. Now listen, church, we're closing. I need, I need, I need every one of y'all. I'm gonna be a little light right now, a little levity, but it's all right. Brother Kearney and and uh, Deacon Hoover, our vice chair and our chair, they're gonna be all over Pastor come Tuesday. <laughs> they're gonna run me down and telling me about my time and and uh, it's gonna be eight minutes of terror, gonna be twenty minutes of terror that I'm gonna have to go through. Hey, Amen. Listening to the man, because they're going to, they going to, y'all pray for a brother. Hey, Amen. Y'all pray for a brother. But was the Lord here today? Did the Lord come through today? Did the Lord come through today? Huh? Thank you, Sister Rhonda. One person going to pray for me. I pray. God knows I'm going to need, I'm going to need that asbestos suit. It's going to get hot. I'm going to need that asbestos suit. But God knows the Lord came through here today. And I want you to know, I still ain't finished. I'm just on minute five. I still got two more minutes of terror I want to preach about, but I had to quit because, <laughs> hey, I went, I hey, man, but the Lord is good. Come on, Hoover, say a word to us and remind us of anything, and then we'll be on our way thanking God for another great day. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. God has met us here today, hasn't he? Yes, yes, yes. What a mighty God we serve. Yes. What a mighty, mighty, mighty God. We are indeed on this pilgrim's journey, aren't we? On this pilgrim's journey to the cross. And Pastor Golden, you have preached today. Amen. We have been inspired by your words today and, and, and looking introspectively within ourselves to say, Lord, help us to do better. Lord, help us to live better, love better. And indeed, knowing that while we're in this season of terror, that God walks with us. And then you reminded us of the hope that the triumph is coming, amen. And so we're grateful to the Lord, New Unity. What a mighty God we serve. Reminding you on our calendar for the week, we have our Bible study on Wednesday night. Come out with us. First of all, let me back that thing up. On Wednesday at 12 noon, oh, I'm sorry, I probably wasn't very church appropriate. <laughs> we have Wednesday at 12 noon, we have our 12 noon hour of power, amen. And so we want to encourage you to join us for that broadcast right here on Zoom One. It's just a one hour service. And so join us on Wednesdays at 12 noon. And then at 7 p.m., we come out with our Bible study on Wednesday evening. We're grateful to the Lord during this season of Lent that our very own ministers will be teaching the lessons throughout these next six weeks. Amen. And so on this week, it'll be none other than our very own minister, Annette Dixon, teaching about the lesson of Lent. Amen. And so let's come out with great numbers and support and encourage her and be good students right there sitting in the front of the class. Amen. For this great teacher and woman of God that we'll be joining with and learning one with another on Wednesday night. It is our Lenten season, so we're coming in our dark attire, amen. We're coming with our Bibles, with our journals, with our pens, with our blood droplets, amen. And most importantly, we're coming with our stones, amen, because it reminds us that the Lord continues to bring us through, amen and amen. Last week, you got your oil and you got your oil consecrated. You got that oil consecrated so that you can lay it on at home, lay it on your pillow, lay it on your children, on your grandchildren, and let God do the work as he does through his anointed oil, amen? So don't just let that bottle of oil sit there, but let's wear it out and use it out and take God at his word, amen? And then finally on Saturday morning, we come at 7 a.m. for our prayer time. We come at 945 for our Joshua ministry meeting. And then we come from 10 to one for our Christian education classes. And we start it all over again, right again on Sunday morning. So God bless you all, Pastor Golden. 
Amen. Amen. Take the name of Jesus with you, child of sorrow and of woe. It with joy and comfort give you. Take it, church, everywhere you go. Precious name. Oh, how sweet hope of earth and joy of heaven. Amen. Precious name. Oh, how sweet. Love every one of you. Thank you for indulging pass away over my time. I'm way, way, way over my time today, Sister Angela. Still need that pen, Sister Angela. You are, <laughs> amen. Thank you all so very, very much, amen. And God be praised. Have a great day. We love every one of you, amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom all creatures here below. All right, thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Everyone, come on, let's sing. Praise God for more, more blessings flow. Praise God for more, more blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, all Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise him above ye Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Bless you, New Year. See you Wednesday. I expect to be there.